All right, guys, so I'm standing underneath our 67 Chevelle, and I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to install a front and rear high clearance sway bar. And the reason we're putting different sway bars on here, because we did have the other ones on, the conventional ones, which work really good for roll, but we put a bigger tire up front, tire clearance issues, tire to sway bar were rubbing. Um, with the new ones, it's not gonna do that anymore. So let's get started. With the new front and rear sway bars, you're gonna have to drill a couple holes in the rear and up front, they had 516 bolts holding the sway bar to the chassis. We're gonna bump that up to 3 8 Bigger bolt, stronger, better for the turns. And over here. All right, with these all drilled, we'll go ahead and tap them. Now that the frame's been tapped out to 3 8 it's time to install our brackets. There are two different brackets, one for metric cars later, and then the earlier cars are standard. And the difference is, is the bolt pattern from here to here. On the metric cars, they're a little further apart, so you can't mix the uh, brackets up. The reason we use these brackets to relocate the sway bar back a little bit, to get it away from the idler arm. In some cases, I, uh, the sway bar will actually rub on the idler arm or come very close to it. This will set it back about an inch. That way everything's nice and clear. All right, with that one on, we'll go ahead and do the driver's side and uh, install the sway bar. All right, first we're gonna get our bushings on there. And we'll start with one bracket. It's easier to just get one started on the one side, then you come over to the other side and then get the other bolts in. And there's that one. All right, so it's time to put the rod in onto the end link. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna thread it on there maybe a quarter inch, and I'm gonna leave everything really loose, including the bushings up here. That way I can mount the end links to the sway bar. It just makes it a little easier. I like to come through the backside. There you go. Put the lock washer, washer, and nut on. Let's get the other side on. We'll start tightening everything up. All right, so what I have done is I've taken the jam nut, placed it up against the rod end, and then came down here and tightened everything up against the bushings. And that way that's all secure. And all that's left is for me to tighten up uh, the brackets to the frame and we're good to go. All right, I'll put some grease in there and uh, I think we'll wrap up the front and then go to the rear. All right, so we're gonna start with the rear sway bar now. Um, first putting the bushings on. Then your brackets are gonna go over that. All right, let's go ahead and put our U-bolt through. Our first bracket. This is what's gonna clamp it to the rear end. And then our billet bracket that's gonna hold the sway bar up. Swing that down in like that, like that. And our nut. All right. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get these bolts snugged up. I wanna be able to still move this because I still gotta center it left to right, but also this bar here, we do not want it to collide in the rear end. So we gotta find that fine medium where everything operates perfectly. Go ahead and measure. We got five and an eighth there. We got five and a quarter there. Five and an eighth. I'm back over there again. All right. I like that. Don't forget, we gotta get this angle here. So we want this thing to operate through the entire cycle and make sure these are even also. So if you got, you know, say you got five degrees on this one, get five degrees on this one, just so that they're even. So I'm gonna start off there. So it looks like everything's clearing quite nicely. Make sure everything works properly, it looks good. And now we'll put the end links on and we got two brackets, four holes to drill and we're done. All right, so here's one of our brackets that we're gonna drill to the car. It comes with completely adjustable rod in, so you can get a lot of adjustment out of it. Here's what it's gonna look like assembled. You're gonna have your bolt, spacer, rod in, washer, lock washer, and a nut. And just be sure before you install this, you measure up your other rod in so they're the same length. All right, so I'm gonna set these up in the neutral position. That way from there, you can make it either stiffer or softer. So now that this is all assembled, we'll cycle the bar up, find the spot on the floor of the car, Drill our two holes. Fits nice and flat right there. I'm gonna mark it. So 
So with the bracket off the rod in, I'm gonna slide the bolt through, put it through the holes we drilled, and then put the washer, lock washer, and nut on. All that's left is to connect both rod ends to the bracket. There you go, now he's gotta tighten it all up. Alrighty, so everything's bolted up. I'm gonna bring it down the builder's blocks to make sure we're, we got the right angles and everything's clearing and uh, make sure we're ready for the road. All right, so everything does look good. The bar's nice and flat. We got plenty of clearance at the pumpkin. Um, all that's left is I gotta grease the uh, bushings and uh, get this thing on the ground, get it on the street and have some fun. So at a great price, a couple hours of your time, I was able to install the high clearance sway bars. We got a wider tire up front. All that's left for me to do is get it off the lift and on the road.